Recently, I did a review on an Acer laptop which was equipped with AMD Ryzen 3 3200U. Today, we will take a look at another budget 3200U CPU laptop. But this time, it's from Lenovo and this will be a gift for my dad's upcoming birthday. Seriously, what is wrong with these companies in naming their laptops? The outside of the laptop is made of plastic, so it's very light. But that doesn't mean this is a thin laptop and I was surprised to see how thick it was. On the left side of the laptop, we can find a charger port, an HDMI port, one USB 2 for peripherals and two USB 3 for fast transfer. On the right side, we have an SD card reader and the audio jack. That tiny button over there is called one key recovery button, which is used to enter the BIOS. I have not seen the button since my last Lenovo laptop. Flip to the back, we can see the intake vent of the single heat pipe cooling system. The hot air is blown to the back of the laptop, but you can see that the monitor hinge kinda blocks the air. For a weak CPU like this, thermal won't be an issue. But this reminds me of Apple's similar stupid design that melted their 2008 MacBook Pro unibody's monitor glue. Talking about a hinge, here's how the laptop looks when we open it normally. And here is how it looks when we push it to the limit. Yes, it lays flat on the table. To access the internal components, we need to remove 10 screws and pry off the plastic panel. I really dislike the prying part on these cheap laptops. Why do we still need to pry with those many screws? Anyway, with the panel removed, here it is. Here we can look at the cooling solution of the laptop. It seems to be easy to disassemble for maintenance. Next is the battery. The total capacity is 4500 mAh. Even though the size of this battery is smaller than the Acer laptops, it can hold more power. 4500 versus 3200 and that's amazing. In the future, if the battery needs to be replaced, simply remove these three screws and unplug the cable, and that should be good to go. Right next to the battery is the hard drive tray. I will add this 5400 RPM 1TB hard drive which is from my Dell laptop to increase the storage. To install, first flip up the drive connector. Next, simply plug the hard drive into the connector and push it down. Very simple installation. On the panel, there's dampening foam which helps reduce hard drive vibration. While talking about storage, let's take a look at this. The laptop comes with 8 gig of RAM and here we are. 4 gigs is already soldered to the motherboard. To access the other stick, we need to remove the so-called RAM cover. From this view, you can clearly see the motherboard has enough space to make room for a normal RAM slot. I really don't understand the reason of soldering the RAM while there is enough room and the laptop is not slim, it's very thick. So it does not make any sense to disallow user from fully upgrade. We can add more memory and still run the system in dual channel up to 4GB of RAM thanks to flex mode. But there is another problem. 
34th 4GB RAM Max Cell RAM stick is rated at 2666MHz so I decided to replace it with the Samsung RAM from my mom's laptop and it has the same speed. When I boosted into Windows and checked Task Manager, the RAM was shown running at 2400MHz, meaning the solder RAM runs at lower speed. Lenovo gives us one slow and one fast RAM which wastes a little bit of performance of the system. Next, we take a look at the PCIe Wi-Fi card and the PCIe NVMe M.2 SSD. They both come with very interesting shapes. Very good for Lenovo to care about the temperature of the SSD by including a thermal pad. Also, on the panel, there's a copper sheet that can help transfer the heat away from the SSD drive. I have seen 128GB SATA SSD this size, but this is the first time I have seen a small NVMe SSD with 256GB in it. Looks very interesting. By the way, if you need to replace the NVMe with your M.2 SSD, you first need to move the M.2 standoff to the other slot. I wanted to see if this laptop can support SATA M.2, so I threw my ADATA SU-800 in just to test. I boot it up and the system couldn't recognize the drive, so if you plan to replace the M.2 SSD, make sure you buy an NVMe drive, not a SATA one. Next is the Wi-Fi card and it looks like the card was cut in half. Despite the size, it can support both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz Wi-Fi according to the spec sheet. It has Bluetooth 4.1, so I will replace it with the Intel Wi-Fi card from my Dell laptop because this thing has Bluetooth 4.2 and it can occupy the entire PCIe slot. The laptop comes with Windows 10 S, but I prefer Windows 10 Enterprise version, so I reinstall everything. This is not an IPS panel, so the screen can get dark if it is viewed from different angles. Camera is very bad. It is very blurry and laggy. I feel like it is even worse than my niece's $100 Chromebook. I suggest buying a webcam if you really care about the video chat quality. I ran one Sitbench R20 test to check the temperature and noise of the laptop. With power option set to high performance, during the test, the clock speed stayed around the base clock, average at 2.7 GHz, so the temperature never reached more than 65 degrees. And here is the noise test. I remember back in my day, Lenovo used JBL speakers for their laptops and the audio was exceptional. For this laptop, it has Dolby Audio, so the quality is still great. This machine is very good for enjoying YouTube videos or movies.
Overall, I am not really sure what to think about this laptop. I think the Acer is the better choice if you want to buy an upgrade. This laptop has hiccups here and there, but with 256GB SSD and 8GB of RAM, it does have better value. This laptop should be an okay choice for daily office usage and media entertainment. So it is up to you to decide. I will have links to both the Acer and Lenovo laptops in the description for you to check out. If you want to see the gaming performance of the AMD Ryzen 3 3200U CPU, please check out my last video of the Acer laptop. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.